Hello guys and welcome <laughs> to the reaction reactions guys um, for the people who are tuning in for the first time and just checking it out scribe the raid leader of the best well world number one guild right now has made a list of the things to fix world of warcraft scribe and the squad Copium, copium, copium. Um, and I kind of just want to see it. I have not seen this yet. So I really just haven't had the time to prepare and stuff like that. But let's let's go see. So there has been goals, global stuff, class spec design, spice, raiding, mythicless, PvP, social, housing. Let me see. Let me see how we're going to do this. Goals. Rewire our brains to play for fun and not efficiency. I'm sure some of the things the scribe is going to say here is coming from Final Fantasy. Because I know Echo... I know Limit has been playing a lot of Final Fantasy. So they're probably doing a lot of Final Fantasy and comparing to things that are happening in that game. Comparing to World of Warcraft. Um, I'm willing to kind of bet that a lot of that is happening. Um, reduced bench people. Reduce benched people. Are we talking about flex raiding? Reduce barrier for entry to raids. I can see what this is have. I can see why they they would say this. You know why? Because you might not realize this if you're watching this right now. But there is a very small percentage of the total population of World of Warcraft that actually plays this game in raids or Mythic Plus. We're looking at somewhere like 10, 15, 20 percent. The amount of people that have KSM is probably around 10, 15 percent of population. Like, it's an insanely small part. So, I can see this. I'm not sure how it works in Final Fantasy. I'm not sure how hard it is to prepare for it. But I can see where it's coming from. Reduce FOMO. Fear of missing out. I'm assuming that's what it means, right? Fear of missing out. So is that like reducing hype to some extent as well? I don't know. I, I'll just have to read into that. Uh, not forced to do content, but... Uh, but want to do content. Yeah, this is a big one. This is probably the biggest one. I don't want to do a select number of chores so I can do the stuff that I want. Don't get me wrong. There's always supposed to be, in my opinion, there's always supposed to be a certain amount of grinding in an MMO game because right now the culture of games is... Look at New World. New World is released and there are people who have 300, 400 hours into it. I don't even know if you can have 400, but I know there are people who have 300 hours in New World and they're like, where's content? So, I definitely think there's supposed to be a bit of grind, but the grind should be meaningful. And you should not be like, it's like coming to your, it's like your, it's like, it's like your mom gives you chores. It's like, if you do this, you'll get out and you can play with your friends. Like, I don't think it should be like that. So I, 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 I can see that. Reduce incentives to boost and get boosted for gold to clear content in game. I don't know. Is, isn't gold boosting or like boosting ev in every game to some extent? Reduce incentives to boost and get boosted. I don't really understand this completely. So there should be no reason to get boosted. Hmm. Don't force don't force people to play the game every day all the time. Yeah, this is a big one. This is this is a huge one in my opinion. This is a big one because I think Blizzard a lot of the things that they release in the recent times. A lot of the things they've released in recent times is all about metrics in terms of how many people log into the game. And this is going to come across really weird, but I'm going to go like I'm, I say this with love to some extent because I genuinely enjoy World of Warcraft and I like World of Warcraft. When 9.15 was released, it was bittersweet for me. I saw 9.15 and I was like, damn, they listen to community. If you go to Reddit, wow, any post that got over 2k or whatever likes... Blizzard actually implemented in the game. They actually listened to everyone. They added, like, you know, no AoE cap or, like, removed the AoE cap. You know, again, AoE cap is still there, but, like, restrictions to AoE cap. You know, you have the covenants and all of the things like that. Grind or time gating behind legendaries. They removed all of this. And I was like, damn, man, 9.15. Blizzard knows exactly what the player base wants. And you know what the bitter part is? Blizzard knows exactly what the players want, but yet for the last three expansions, they have released expansions, patches, 
where they knew a lot of the systems were flawed and should have been changed from the very start, but they didn't change it from the very start because they wanted to be like, oh, hey, guys, 9.2 or 0.2.3 patch. Here we go, guys. You got your legendary... You got your legendary vendor in Legion Mythic Blues, BFA, Azerite, and Corruption Vendor, Shadowlands, you got your Covenants. So it's almost like, not intentionally, but Blizzard wants to be heroes by fixing their own game later rather than sooner, which in turn, I feel like it gives them, I feel they have some sort of metric that's like, if you play, the, if you're forced to log in for a game a little bit longer, it's a win in their eyes. At least that's my opinion, but again, that's just what I think. So let's see. Global stuff. No PTR. 100% agreed. Biggest, biggest, biggest... One of, the, one of the most annoying things is knowing exactly the fights, or some of the fights, knowing exactly what's happening, what's coming out in the next patch. I don't know, can anyone tell me if Final Fantasy has a PTR? Do they have, like, beta testing for the new Endwalker expansion? I don't know. But honest to God, having PTRs and knowing exactly what the fights are going to be like, you know, the last boss is not going to be tested. Knowing exactly what the fights are going to be like, all of the changes that are coming and things like that, and all the little Easter eggs is, is defeating the purpose. <sighs> when you log in, I kind of want to be surprised in a new patch, surprised with a new raid, surprised with a new boss. This is all on the eyes. This is all on Blizzard. Blizzard in is a big company they should be able to afford a proper testing team that tests raids tests dungeons so like their blizzard is so lucky to have a player base that is willing to go and test their game for free make spreadsheets about look at class discords and stuff like that they have lists like misweavers for example they have a list of like 20 books for misweavers to be fixed and this is all provided by players with like, they don't get paid to do this. They give it to Blizzard to fix. But at the end of the day, Blizzard should be doing it themselves. And it would create a way better, in my opinion, like a surprise type of thing. Like, at least that's my... I, I don't know how people feel about this. At the end of the day, for the content creators and stuff like that, like, I benefit from PTR because I can go on PTR and I can test the beta and I can make videos about it. So I can see where I would lose out from. But I would still think no PTO would be better. Enable all specs. It should feel punishing to play another spec of your class. It shouldn't feel punishing to play another spec of your class. What what does that exactly mean? Enable all specs. Are we talking What is this? Are we talking like like classic type of where you have like multiple different talents or are you talking about class balance certain specs are not playing properly like you said like feral doesn't really compare to balance in terms of utility because of tree ends innervate and stuff like that i don't know if i'm reading this 100 percent i'm sure it's in the i'm sure it's in the class balance type of thing um global release yeah i think they're gonna do that i really believe blizzard is gonna do that remove our token it's kind of be like <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit weird, but Scribe coming with this is probably the main man to talk about WoW token because it's not it's not unknown for world first guilds to benefit from WoW token where they can buy like you know BOEs being a big huge thing like especially in BFA with the corruption and buying BOEs to have a really big advantage. I I remember people were, were like it was like. It was a big deal. Um, yeah, I think I like. I wouldn't mind if WoW token would be gone. I wouldn't mind. I, I think the biggest issue here is that you had BOEs that you can, like, you can buy them out. You can put it on your main raiders, and you can have a distinct advantage in the first week of the raid, where the item level of the world first raiders is comparable to raiders or like you know other guild raiders like a month down the line. Which is kind of ridiculous. I think, I, I like, I think removing, I, I think removing BOEs or even or something like that. I don't know. I don't, I don't mind it. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Remove our token, account wide, account wide. Almost any character progression. Yes, hundred percent. This is this is the thing that I just talked about in. This is the exact same thing I just talked about a second ago, 
on stream. So this is coming from Final Fantasy, for sure. Because in Final Fantasy, you have jobs, which is classes. But you only have one character. Your one character is able to go into another spec. <coughs> Apologies. Another spec. And... <laughs> it's one character. And you basically are able to play all classes. Think about it as in your Resto Shaman is not a Resto Shaman. It's like a placeholder character that can play any spec, any class in the game. I think they swap based on a weapon in Final Fantasy. I'm not 100% sure. But 100%, they should make everything account-wide. 100%. This is an easy one. This is an easy one. Um, for sure. No item should have proccing socket tertiaries. If an item can have a socket, it should always have a socket. I, I, I somewhat disagree with that. I actually don't mind having a little bit RNG. Like, I, I feel like if you remove all of the orange, Don't get me wrong. There's this problem when you have too many oranges. When you have Titan Forging, doing a looking for aid content, and your item procs mythic level, like, end boss item. Which, there's plenty of clips you can see of people doing it. I think one of the raiders from back then, Method, had the same thing happening with a Titan Forge, like, a really low mythic plus gear. Titan Forging is bad, in my opinion. But having a little bit, little bit orangey, I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad, honestly. Reducing daily weekly maintenance that you have to do on your character. Yeah, I think this is really evident in Shadowlands. Shadowlands had a lot of Courtia. Like, I don't know how many people like Courtia. Court and like... 100%. I, don't <laughs> I definitely... I think there's a line. And you can, and you can, and you can really give me your opinions. I really want to hear your opinions. I think there's a line between having or being forced to log in every day versus raid logging and doing nothing else outside of the game. Do you know what I mean? I think a little bit, and this is might sound weird, but I think a little bit of a grind in an MMO game is kind of needed, but I think it's too much right now. But at the same time, if I want to, like, I feel WoW is one of those type of games where you invest your personality, like... It becomes your personality where to an extent that you play this game so much. Um, I think you want to have things to do. And Mythic Plus, Raiding, PvP, I think those are great things to do. But I don't mind a little bit of a grind. But it has to feel rewarding. Like, I don't mind having to do something that's going to progress my character. But not what's happening right now in Shadowlands. It's, like, uh, not what's happening right now in Shadowlands. In Shadowlands, is, there's too much. But I do feel that there is... Like, I... Like... I still feel like a little bit of grind, and it might sound weird. It just needs to feel rewarding. BOE should be the same item level as previous tiers, uh, tiers mythic le eye level. Obviously, no suckers, no tertiaries. So if they remove WoW token... Yeah, but if they remove WoW token, if he wants to remove WoW token, and then BOE is not mattering that much... I kind of don't care about BOEs at all. If I'm being honest with you, I, I don't care about BOEs at all. But I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people in the game. Like, to me, when I look at the group finder and I see Mythic, Raid, BOE farming, I cannot think of anything more boring. So for me, BOEs, like, they really... I, I just really don't care about BOEs. I find them as a way to level alts and gear up alts and stuff like that. So I'm, 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 I don't have an opinion on this. Cross server and crash fa faction raiding mythic plus PvP. I think they're gonna do this in the next expansion. I think I think they're gonna do this in the next expansion. I think they're gonna do cross server and uh, cross faction raiding, and I think they're gonna do global release. Out of all of these, I think they're gonna do that. Out of all the things that I've seen here, I think those are the main ones that I actually think are feasible and what Blizzard is gonna do. Content does not does not need to give you character power. What does that mean? What does that mean? Your, your character doesn't benefit from the content that they're doing? They're not getting loot? Or the loot is not good? I think this is really, really vague. Content doesn't need to give you, give you, you character power. I don't know, man. I like progressing characters. I like doing content that's going to give me direct incentive. I'm not going to do... Like, I, I, I might misunderstand this, but... I'm not going to do co Mythic Plus or Raids if I ha don't have a chance of getting loot or gear out of it. 
uh, yeah gear that doesn't like of course you know you want to get the challenge and stuff like that but i want to get something out of it you know uh gear that drops from certain activities should be stronger in that activity this is an interesting one this is a really big one actually this is for sure the big one this is going straight into domination shards being really strong in raiding and basically what he's saying is that domination shards should also should also have or you should get domination gear equivalent in mythic blows and possibly domination gear equivalent in pvp so you're not forced as a mythic plus player you're like okay i'm 250 item level but if i get domination gear if i get domination shards i'm doing that one extra one two three percent damage so i'm forced to go into raiding in order to progress mythic plus um and i don't think this i, I think this could be I, I think this could be nice i think this would be i think this would lead to players doing what they want to do mythic plus or raiding there's been a huge there's been a huge huge discussion about the last two bosses in mythic raiding giving you higher item level gear and therefore every pvp or mythic plus player is looking at those two last bosses and saying why don't we get that i actually and this might be unpopular opinion i actually think that the last two bosses of the raiding tier giving you highest item level in the game is not a bad approach because i do think they are they those bosses usually require a huge amount of effort they're 25 they're 20 20 man rating and they're non-repeatable content or like you cannot spam and spam and do it over over and over again um but this might be unpopular opinion so i actually i actually would like to see this I think this would be nice because you'll be able to focus on whatever you want and you don't have to do other things. Gold should be something you spend for fun and not grind for character power. Maybe for BOEs but with item level of uh, previous tiers. I don't know man, don't you like... I feel like... Why not make professions matter? Like if you look at uh, New World, I think the way that they do professions is probably the main thing that they actually do really right. Where professions actually matter. If you look at TBC or Classic... If you look at professions actually mattering and like giving you like real incentive to level a certain profession, get gear from certain professions, I feel like that's where you can have a gold sink. I think you can have a gold sink into those things. So all the student professions won't seem as useless as they are right now. They're not useless, but man, if you play TBC or like New World and crafting and all of that, I feel it's like it's done so much better in those. Legend items should feel legendary, rare, hard to get. I kind of agree with that. Legendary is lost their meaning. Every character has one legendary. Every spec has multiple legendaries. Remember back in the day when legendaries were really, really rare? But at the same time, he has negative effect. Because if you look at Legion legendaries and you got the wrong legendary, you were so upset. But you also miss that feeling of getting that legendary. Like, you also miss that feeling of getting that legendary. So I feel... I do kind of agree to it, but I don't know how would they achieve that. But yeah, I do miss that feeling, for sure. For sure. Alright. I'm taking I'm taking way too long with this. This is going to be a really long. Class design, uh, class spec design. Create less systems in the game that feel, uh, that feel more important. Yeah, for sure. Work on the class specs instead of external systems such as Soulbind Covenant. So this is borrowed power. Um, a lot of people don't want to feel their class. They don't want their class to feel absolutely useless after an expansion because it lost, it lost legendary system, it lost soul binds, it lost covenants, and all of a sudden your class without without those spells feels really bad. I think the prime example of this was Legion going into BFA, where so many classes felt so bare and so bad. They felt so bare and so bad. Uh, like it was insane. I remember enhancement shamans were like shamans in general were feeling really bad, especially DPS shaman classes where Blizzard basically said that like very, very early in the expansion that we're going to redo those classes because they just feel so bad without the borrowed power from Legion. So yeah, for sure. Spice. I don't know what that means, but let's go. World events for special occasions. So this is all coming from Final Fantasy. So I'm sure a lot of this stuff is going to be coming from Final Fantasy. Yeah, I don't mind that. World, world Realm first. Some sort of announcement. Cool event being triggered by it. I mean, this is this is literally affects like 0.0001% of the population in World of Warcraft. 
I do think there should be better rewards. Like, remember they're doing the new... For the people who don't know, they're doing a new achievement for people who get 0 0.01 of highest score in Mythic Plus. So this is the same kind of deal that they used to do in PvP. And now you're gonna get a title. I feel like you should get something more than a title. So people are more pushed to do really high-end content. I don't mind this. Like, I don't think it would upset that many people. I think it would encourage people to try and strive and get better and stuff like that. But it, it is... It's it's not gonna affect a lot of people. It's not a big deal. Uh, for raiding Mythic Plus tournaments and first 2.4k uh, or, or other events. So basically what I just said. See Final Fantasy boss transitions. We need more stuff like that, especially on end bosses. I have no idea what the Final Fantasy boss transition are like. If someone can explain it to me, I would love to see it, guys. Raiding. Heroic and Mythic released at the same time. Interesting. I don't know. Why? I kind of like the Heroic. Then you have a week of clearing Heroic. No, I don't like that. I, I prefer, like... I, I would feel overwhelmed to do Heroic. And then I feel like I'm missing out by not doing Mythic. Because you have to remember... The last boss in Heroic is almost always harder than the first three bosses in Mythic or something. Like, like the first few bosses. So would you go into Mythic? I would feel like... I don't mind the current release. Maybe that's just me. Heroic loot should be uh, should be barely an upgrade. No more than five item levels higher compared to previous mythic. Main objective is to remove split runs. No, not more than five item levels higher compared to previous mythic. So, what kind of item levels are we looking at from heroic to mythic? This is you see the split runs. You see this whole thing here? Most of the people, like, I'm not gonna say it. Most of the people don't give a flying poop about split runs. And most people are gonna look at this and they're gonna be like, this guy lives in a bubble where he thinks that something that affects 1% of the population should be trickled down to the rest of the people. And I agree. I really don't care. Like... I, I think split runs, this is, this is gonna sound harsh. I don't like split runs. I, I see people doing it and stuff like that. I don't like how it encourages, like, you know, it's weirdness. But at the same time, if the change to remove split runs is going to negatively impact the rest of the people, then don't do it. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. Um, No more than five items. I would have to see the item. I would want heroic loot to be still impactful. Do you know what I mean? Because for most people, believe it or not, heroic might be the pinnacle. Normal might be the pinnacle. So for the people who are doing normal, they want to get the item levels for heroic. But I would just need to see the item level breakdown. But you get my point. Uh, this might not be a bad idea. Split ones are pretty annoying. I'm, I'm spending so much time on this. I really do apologize, guys. Remove boss mechanics from Dungeon jour Journal. Only use it for lore and loot. Okay, so this is actually pretty cool. You know why? Because I actually do think that finding out a boss, finding out what the boss does, and finding out like this is this is probably coming from the fact that a lot of the top end guilds are doing Final Fantasy blind. They're not sure what to do. They're not sure of the tactics. And I think this is really fun. I think they're having a lot of fun, and I kind of envy it to some extent, because when you're doing a boss and you have a guy that tells you exactly what to do, it's really fun finding out uh, bosses to some extent. But I know, I know that after a certain point, if people are hitting their head against the wall. This can become a problem, but I I, I see it as a, a definitely something taken from Final Fantasy for sure. Bosses should be more of a skill tactic check rather than a gear check. Goal is to remove split runs. Uh, this is this is a big one. This is a big one. Again, I feel like the remove split runs. Most people don't care about this. And how to fix WoW might not actually... A lot of people might not care about this. I don't... Like, I, most people might not even know what split runs are. Like, what do they even mean? Skill and tactic checks and have less of... I, I think people... I think some people like... You know, these easy bosses like Guardian where they don't have a lot of mechanics. And it's mainly about optimizing your healing, your DPS and stuff like that. I think World of Warcraft Mythic bosses require a lot of tactics and a lot of skill. 
I feel like what more could you like how much more difficult do we want to go with this? Actually, for people who play high-end Final Fantasy, are Final Fantasy bosses at the highest end? Are they harder than are they harder than WoW Mythic? Or like what's the kind of boss design there? Like is it crazy tactically or it requires a lot of tactics? It should take players 8 to 9 clears of the raid to get full beast gear. If that's not the statistical average, then introduce token drops instead of specific pieces at the same amount of weak kills of bosses. I think a lot of people would think that that's... I think classic players would literally laugh when they would read this. Because I know there's a lot of classic players who've been doing this for... Doing content for like six months and they haven't seen the drop that they wanted. Some kind of a bad look protection. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I honestly, I honestly, I honestly don't know how to do. I wouldn't mind this, of course. If I don't get a drop after a while, I would like it. Yeah. But I, I don't know how to feel about this exactly. Uh, full cooldown reset after wipes and respawns in front of the boss. Yes, hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. This should be a way to remove your. Like, there should be some person or something like that who just removes all your cooldowns. Or, like, if they're on cooldown. Doesn't matter if it's 2 minutes, 1 minute, 30 seconds. Like, yeah, quality of life, for sure. 10 man only heroic difficulty raids. 1 to 3 bosses in between other raids. Interesting. 10 man only. So, this is coming from Final Fantasy because I think Final Fantasy has 8 players. Like, they don't have bigger rating than 8 players. So maybe people want a 10-man rating again. 10-man only heroic difficulty raids. I think a lot of people would like to have smaller raids, but flex rating exists. Flex rating already exists. Like you can do flex heroic, uh, heroic raids right now and you can have a good time. Scale down function for all content. Scale down to the le item level you would have back then and be able to replay content. This is a big one and I actually kind of agree with this. So this is coming exactly from Final Fantasy. Like A lot of people will tell you that World of Warcraft has a lot of dead space. It has dead content where previous expansions, you never want to do those. You know, you have time walking and I think Legion Mythic Plus coming back is insanely nice because this is literally what it's doing. It's taking dead content that actually is pretty good content as long as you scale your item level and now you have Legion Mythic Plus. Like, what about introducing Legion raids where you have to do them at the same item level? And you get certain amount of loot from that. So this is exactly what they're saying. Reusing old content, especially for people who did not experience that content and for them it's going to be new. I see this as a bit, I see this as like, this could be really, really, really cool in my eyes. But um, I'm just not sure how they would balance the item level rewards from those raids and stuff like that. But yeah, I think that's I think that's a really cool thing that um, Final Fantasy does, especially with the... Um, Especially with everything being account-wide. I think account-wide and reusing old content is one of the best things that Final Fantasy could introduce to World of Warcraft for sure. Oh, yeah, Mythic Plus. We're nearly here, guys. I know this is really long. Uh, Copium. Valor points should take less time to farm and you get your max gear and you get the max gear possible for Mythic Plus. I think there is a lot of problems with valor gear like i don't mind about the valor points a lot of the times you can have a lot of valor points but you might not have any gear to use your valor points on i definitely feel like how many people have been trying to get unbound changeling soul letting ruby from theater of pain and all that and they just never seen the drop maybe a vendor or something that could help out after a certain point i don't know but at the same time, you don't want to be given gear. You still want to have that, you know, chasing. You want to chase for the gear. You want to have character progression. Uh, I still believe in that chase. But I do think that after 40 runs of Mr. <laughs> to get Unbound Changeling, it can become a bit of trouble. So yeah, I, I, I would agree. Be, be able to play any key you want once, on, once you unlock it. Yeah, I think that would be cool. 
I think they will be, they're kind of coming back into it with the random keys. They're kind of doing it. Item level should have slightly less importance. Yeah, I don't do a lot of PvP, so I guess people want skill to be bigger than item level. I, I let PvP players to answer this. Answer this. Uh, be strict about punishment for harassment, flame, making fun of people. This is what this is huge. Actually, I know this is social part, but this is huge because a lot of people in Final Fantasy will tell you that there is a lot of str like. If you if you say something bad, I think like if you say someone is like they're not doing like you can't even use add-ons. I think add-ons are now banned, but they're kind of frowned upon. So if you use like damage meters and you say like hey hey dude you're doing no damage, that's that could ban get you banned or suspended. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. And now all the student people like act a lot less toxic. But you also have to ask yourself: Are they acting less toxic because they know they're gonna get banned, but they're still toxic? <laughs> kind of holding it in you know um but yeah i i think i think like i think there should be some kind of punishment system for people who leave dungeon keys randomly like don't get me wrong if you leave a key because you, you have you're 40 minutes over time or whatever but if someone just randomly leaves a key because to spite people and stuff like that i definitely think there could be more ways to improve that but i think this is a hard one I don't know. What do people think about this? What do people think about this? Add new player icons that will uh, this will reduce the expansions expectations of people that are, that are new to the game and will encourage players to help them. Oh, new player icons like a buddy system type of thing. I think that I think that's what uh, Final Fantasy does. Guild housing, player housing. So I think this is like heavily inspired by Final Fantasy. I think there's a lot of points. I agree. I think there's a lot of points to agree with this. I think Final Fantasy does have good things. Like I talked about account-wide characters, reusing old content, I think it's really good. I don't fully, I don't fully, like the split run thing, like again, I just don't want, I just don't want, um, you know, like when you say like top 1% dictate what the rest of people go through. And I think a lot of people seen this happening in MDI where, you have these dungeons that are made for MDI type level content. Like in my opinion, Shaolin's dungeons are probably the worst dungeons from the last three expansions. And I think partly it is to do with the fact that they're MDI oriented. And I think I don't want to be a hater to this, but I don't want MDI to dictate the design of dungeons, which in turn made makes them less interesting. So I don't want the same thing to happen where, you know, the top one, like, it's hard to please everyone. You have to pick a side, but I think a lot of the points here are pretty valid. Uh, I know this was a really long overview and I'm extremely tired. This is extremely late for me and I didn't have my energy drink yet. But I think uh, this is going to cause a little bit of a stir, a stir for a lot of people in terms of a less RNG in terms of less grind. It just seems like you want to have more of, and which I agree, don't do the stuff that you don't like, less chores and more time to do what you really enjoy. Mythic Plus PvP or raiding. Let me know, guys, how you feel about this. This is a really, really, really interesting overview of what's happening in World of Warcraft.